Galatians 5, the last two verses, starting from verse 25, and to the end of Galatians 6, verse 5. About living by the Spirit, it's about um, uh, how we relate to each other when a brother or a sister is sort of <coughs> struggling in one way or the other, and about attitudes. <coughs> is it okay to read verse? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just verse. Chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Be creative, dear friend. If someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore them, saving your critical comment to yourself. <laughs> that's helpful. No, that's helpful. Yes. No, we don't we don't criticize. Um, uh, we uh, gently um, restore. That's the that's the word, isn't it? So living in the flesh, um, uh, it's not helpful because it makes us it makes us insecure. It gives us uh, a sense of having to prove ourselves to others. Um, living in the flesh means that we naturally compare ourselves to one another. And then that then leads us to either provoke, to be hostile towards uh, and look down on those we feel um, are inferior to us. And then to, and to envy and look up to people that we feel are superior to us. So this, Paul is is encouraging us to live in the spirit, which does away with all of those things. But living in the flesh, human nature, we're naturally drawn to make comparisons. You're better than me, you're worse than me, you know, and, and that's very unhelpful. And, and both the looking up and looking down are both forms of biblical conceit. So Paul is um, teaching us not to be conceited. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, being hostile and, uh, or envying one another, sort of being jealous of someone who seems to be better or have uh, have a better uh, quality of life than us. We're just going to see a very sim- very brief, um, silly sketch, which some of you may remember from years gone by, just to illustrate this point. It allows us to, as Paul says, fulfil the law of Christ, which means living out the gospel in our personal lives and in our relationships. As a spirit-filled Christian, I can be both bold as I remind myself of my identity in Christ, a loved, holy and righteous member of God's royal family with kingdom authority in this life and the next, and humble as I appreciate that I am a sinner saved only by grace and no better than any of you. That's why Paul calls the members of the Galatian church brothers. He, he, He regards himself as equals with them. So if we, as brothers and sisters in Christ, can, through the work of the Holy Spirit, get that balance between boldness and humility, then we can support one another by gently challenging someone in the church family about their sinful behaviour, all the while realising that we're just as vulnerable to the same temptations. So, how do we restore someone caught up in sin? Well, it's through the gospel. The good news that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. These are just various random verses about the gospel. Consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God. So we remind our fallen brother or sister of the grace of God, the willingness of God to forgive and forget, his great love that motivates his desire for reconciliation again and again and again. We encourage repentance. We pray for spiritual resilience in our brother, as well as for our own protection. So this is a way of bearing one another, one another's burdens, the burdens of guilt and shame that threaten freedom and joy. We join forces with our burdened brother and use our own strength to lift alongside him, yoking ourselves to him and demonstrating the work that Christ did on the cross. For our sake, God made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So no inferiority or superiority complexes, just equals bearing burdens together. That's 
the basic message. <laughs> um, and Jesus, didn't Jesus say, come to me, all who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Today is a day for soul rest, unburdening, taking on Jesus's uh, uh, yoke. My, for Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And back to that Galatians passage in verse um, uh, five, six, chapter six, verse five, for each will have to bear his own load. That might sound like a bit of a contradiction when we're supposed to bear one another's burdens, but um, we do each have our own load to bear. This is, this is different from the, the burden of guilt, um, uh, unresolved sin or the effects of sin in our lives. This is, this is not being heavily laden, carrying our own load. It's not being heavily laden. This is, this is the burden that Jesus gives us. And it's meant to be light because it's being carried by both you and Jesus because you, you're yoked together with Jesus. So Jesus does give us a load to bear, but that's different from this burdensome, unsatisfactory, uh, guilty feelings that we might carry through life. Jesus gives you a load to bear and he bears it with you because you are yoked to him. And, and that load, if you like, will be different for each of us. We all have a different load. It will be different for each other. And here's, here's an example. This is another um, video. It's an example of a church community um, uh, who are sharing uh, about their various burdens. And um, it may be that you can relate to some of them. And I'll leave it with you. After that, I'll come back and we'll pray. It's like that. Just, um, now, you can't tell by looking at people what, what's going on up here or in here or their past or their fears or the failures, the successes. So it's good to celebrate that sort of diversity here and also to be willing to you know, be a bit vulnerable with each other and stuff. So look after each other. But it's, um, it's, it's important to, on the one hand, to be able to be open you know, to share so that someone else can then say, well, let me let me help you with that burden. You know, let's go through that together and then pray. Or what have you. So so we're here about bearing one another's burdens and Zoomers, um, you know, there may uh, be issues that uh, that are unresolved for you. I'd love to uh, pray, pray for you all together. And I guess I'll have to leave you um, to sort of reflect on things and maybe seek uh, help through your home group leader, support group leader, friend, neighbour, no problem. Uh, Father God, thank you so much for those of us joining online um, uh, who have burdens. Um, we all do. And I just pray in the name of Jesus that uh, uh, that their, their burden would be easy and light uh, as they um, share that with you. And I pray that, that you'd uh, help um, Christian brothers and sisters to come alongside uh, my my friends on Zoom uh, to support them and to help them through those burdens sometimes in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray for all of you. I had a little prayer for you. Yeah, just going to pray. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the diversity and the variety of burdens represented here. Thank you for the gospel, uh, which is not only the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, but the means of ongoing restoration in the journey towards righteous living. Help us, Father God, to recognise our own vulnerabilities, to allow others to come alongside us, to help us with our burdens, to hear with grace when others speak the truth in love into our lives. Help us as a church family to be the people of God you call us to be by calling out the sin and extending your nail-pierced hands to forgive once again. In Jesus' name. Amen. So um, there's time to uh, hang around, uh, either around your tables or over at the tea hatch to get some refreshments. This area here is um, for personal prayer, or it could be just a quiet place to sit and reflect. Um, it may be that you want to bring someone with you. That's OK. It may be that you're happy to come on your own. And I'm more than happy to hang around here and pray if, if that would be helpful. So bless you.
we will be here again next week. Uh, don't rush off. There's plenty of time to be family together. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you.